Walter and Bryant here from Grex. Um, Hello, everyone. I'm going to give you a little uh, talk about uh, this wonderful Grex tritium, and well, a whole series of Grex airbrushes and their versatility. Yeah. But I uh, wanted to go into a quick little little story. Um, first met Bryant here back around 2016. I was literally done with the hobby because I had got developed a little bit of a disability. Couldn't airbrush or do anything anymore. And it's pretty much down. I was literally at this, this one, what was it a hobby show? Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of went there to basically look at it over and see about selling all my stuff. This is a place I want to take and sell my stuff. And here's this guy, you know, out there giving demos on this airbrush. And he, he called me over and thought about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I pretty much give it up. And he, he convinced me to, to sit there and try out this airbrush. And, uh, you know, oh my God, it's a game changer for me. It, it literally, I wouldn't be doing this job. I wouldn't be here, here at Spray Gun or anything if it wasn't for, for meeting Dre Bryant here and um, for Grex. It, it, just, it just wouldn't happen. Well, and I can attest that uh, Walter's one of many testimonials that we've had over the years of um, people that have had you know, life challenges with hand injuries, things of that nature. And the great thing about the pistol grip airbrush is you are able to utilize it a lot easier than the, the uh, traditional style airbrushes. So it's a great tool. But it not only that, but for the individual that has had challenges and they pick this up and they get a chance to utilize it when we demo and we put it in the customer's hand as well, is to see that light bulb flash in their mind, so to speak, that, hey, I can do this. It's even more gratifying for the consumer that has seen Grex in print ads and things like that, but have never had a chance to put their hands on the airbrush itself and they come up to me at a show. Some of them are vendors before the show even opens and says, hey, I've seen you guys, or, or even if it's a consumer, they come up to me and say, well, you know, I knew you were gonna be here. I really wanna try this airbrush out. I don't get it though, how's it a double action airbrush? You know, and I explained to them, it's a two stage trigger. First stage is sets your air, and the second stage sprays the paint. The more you pull on the trigger, the more paint flow. And of course, we have our demo, as Walter was talking about, and we put it in the consumer's hand. And it's, it's just an instant flipping of the switch, so to speak, of, okay, I got it, this is cool. And just to see that, interaction is very gratifying for us and for me in particular to be able to provide that to the consumer. What Walter wanted me to touch on a little bit today though was also the adaptability of our airbrushes. Not only the Tritium pistol grip but also our traditional style Genesis line of airbrushes or XGI or XSI and also now our XBI which is the siphon feed version which is used more for like the t-shirt artists and whatnot. They have the ability to utilize with all these airbrushes our nozzle kits you can go as far down as a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.7 millimeter. Now, one thing I will stress is the 0.7 millimeter we brought out primarily for the automotive industry for shop environments with the consumer that's going to be utilizing large compressors. Um, and we've also kitted the tritium accordingly to accommodate that market with larger color cups, a nice 10 foot hose, a quick disconnect, and also that has our fan cap capability in there as well, which I'll discuss in a moment. For the scale model builders or artists, the 0.2, the 0.3, and the 0.5 are going to be your go-to needles. Uh, for scale model building in particular, the 0.3 is going to handle a good 95 to 99 percent of your airbrushing needs. It's a phenomenal needle size in which you can go from fine line to general coverage on just about any scale model scale uh, that you'd be working with. Uh, the 0.2 is utilized a little bit more for ink, low viscosity products. Uh, you get in your acrylic type paints, your water-based paints, you start to run into some tip dry issues. And it sounds like semantics, but the 0.3 is a third larger hole and it helps accommodate those challenges a little bit better. The 0.5 is gonna be for your little bit larger scale projects if you're doing uh, motorcycle helmets, gas tanks, things like that, in which you need just a little bit more volume, or if you're working with automotive lacquers, higher viscosity products, even if it's a smaller, concise project, but you're flowing thicker product through the airbrush, the 0.5 is gonna be more friendly. Like a poly clear coat. Right, and then we have our fan cap kits, which include both the round spray and the fan cap. We do recommend that you keep all the parts matched for any given size. So we make the fan cap kits in 0.3, 0.5 and again 0.7 millimeter sizes and again these apply to the same scales uh, pretty much in viscosities that you're working with with your paints as, as with the standard round spray nozzle sizes and then we sell the fan caps individually so if perhaps you've already bought our TK kits just with the round spray but you really want the corresponding fan cap for 0.3 0.5 or 0.7 millimeter you can just buy the fan cap 
So we've been able to do that to really accommodate the customer's needs, whatever their airbrushing needs may be. And then just also here we have, for example, our 50 milliliter cup, which we're working with larger scale subjects. And then with our tritium and our Genesis airbrushes, we have the various color cup sizes that come in the kit. And uh, then Walter also showed the MF kit. So you also get our large four ounce cup, which is pretty much the largest in the industry. Um, this kit, we'll just show you real quickly. So as you can see, this is the same basic airbrush. Go ahead and give me the, so this is the, the uh, four ounce cup and it's lid. We kit it with the fan cap mounted on it, but you do have the round spray as well. This little slot here is for the fan cap when you're not utilizing it. A lot of people ask if something's missing and it's not. Uh, our GMAC, which is our quick disconnect and micro adjustment at the base of the airbrush, which is everybody that's used one loves it. And then of course the uh, 10 foot hose I was telling you about and then another medium sized uh, color cup size. We kit these both in the gravity feed style as well as the side feed style. A lot of people ask, well, what's the difference or why is, where would one be an advantage versus the other? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a side feed airbrush here, but if we were to pretend that this was, the nice thing about side feed, if it were side feed mounted, is you can work more on the vertical and keep your paint upright. For most people, they don't think about that, but uh, markets where that would be critical to some extent in the automotive industry, Aviation, it's a big deal for people that need to spray for scratch repair underneath their aircraft. Also, uh, cake decoration because they need to work more on the vertical. If they have a sheet cake where they need to airbrush Happy Birthday Joey, you can't turn the sheet cake sideways, you have to work straight down on it. So that's again where the side feed airbrush is the preferred configuration. But by and large, the gravity feed suffices for a, a lot of markets. A little bit easier to clean and uh, concise cleaning. And then another product that we have that we've just introduced this last year is our G-Flex hoses. We know that uh, everybody's familiar with their braided hoses. And what we've done actually is this is a product that's already been in, in existence for a long time, but in a larger diameter. So in the pneumatic tools uh, market, they normally work with a quarter inch hose that is very durable for your industrial or shop environment. And what we have done is we've taken that exact same material and downsized it to eighth inch. So if you've had experienced a situation like uh, material rot or just deterioration of the hose, or I mentioned cake decoration before previously, the braided hoses will tend to hold debris in them, which uh, in a, a, for perhaps with a commercial kitchen, uh, that might not look too good for a food inspector. With this, the nice thing is it's easier to keep clean. It might stain, but they'll readily be able to see that that's just pigment that's changed the color, but that they can actually clean this very concisely. The great thing is it's super durable. You can run up to above 100 PSI with this hose and not have a problem with it. So for anybody that's had to buy multiple braided hoses, we really encourage you to take a look at the G-Flex uh, product. You make it with a, a six foot, 10 foot, and 25 foot lengths. Eighth inch thread on both ends. So uh, this is compatible with Grex as well as all of our competitors. For those of you that have a quarter inch thread on your compressor, we have an adapter for that that very concisely adapts this uh, super easy. And that's not a problem. In fact, with our MF kits that we were showing you before, that comes in that particular kit if you're working with larger scale or buy that, that product for those types of needs. Might be a good idea to sh show everybody just how easily these things are converted sure. over. Absolutely. So, you know, if you want to do a blow by blow as I'm just quickly, you know, tearing, tearing it down and switching it. Okay. Well, why don't we just show how easy it is just to go from a round spray to a fan cap. It's very simple. All you do is remove the standard nozzle cap, put the corresponding fan cap to the same size needle and fluid nozzle, thread that on, and you're pretty much ready to go. Now on your compressor, you want to go ahead and raise the PSI up because rather than shooting air through one hole, you're actually shooting air through three holes in order to create that fan shape. So you need to increase the volume of air going through the airbrush. So you want to be up north of 30 PSI. And also with our fan caps, they do have a rotating head so you can do vertical, horizontal, everything in between. You set it however you want and it's going to give you that really nice fan spray. Uh, for I keep referring to scale model building. We found consumers in the in that market that have found ways to use the fan cap above and beyond what we originally intended it for. Calligraphy. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, lettering, <laughs> absolutely for, for the artists, uh, for the scale model guys and the miniatures uh, painters. The fan cap is wonderful for your primer coats. Uh, especially when you're working with something that has very petite 
detailed effects like uh, say chain mail on a small uh, figure, you're not going to overwhelm that detail with the fan cap where you might run that risk with the round spray. And so the fan cap is really wonderful for that. Now the other general purpose for the fan cap is for very even consistent finishes if you're doing, for example, scale model cars, anything where you're trying to do like an automotive or aviation grade finish. So it makes a world of difference in doing your top top close key clears, things like that too. Just yeah. laying it down and get, it, getting getting a very beautiful orange peel free. Yeah, it's just like a miniature, literally a miniaturized version of a actual detail or full spray gun in the real automotive world or aviation world. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and switch this one from a 0.3 to a 0.7 real quick, just to sh you know, just to show you how quick and easy it is. Mm -hmm. It's literally just taking the back end off, and then you're just going to swap three parts out. Pull the needle, take the air cap off. Our little wrench uh, comes with the airbrush. We also kit them in the, in the nozzle kits in case you lost the one for the airbrush. Uh, lefty loosey, righty tighty to put the fluid nozzle on or, or to remove it. Now the important thing when you thread the uh, fluid nozzle on is you want to initially do hand tight, but you don't want to stop there. You want to use the wrench just to snug it just a little bit. You don't want to do it too firm because eventually you will strip it, but just a little nudge. So it's uh, not going to move. No air will escape or cause bubbles in your color cup. If you do get bubbles in your color cup, that's probably where your problem is. 99% of the time, that is something having to do with the fluid nozzle. And simply slide the needle in from behind. Make sure you like, get the lock nut tightened. <laughs> Yep. Sometimes people forget that and then they call us saying, hey, the airbrush doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, we get that all the time. <laughs> and there you go. And you're, you're up to your next stage. Sure. And another nice little feature of our airbrush is we don't have the crown cap, but our nozzle caps are still, for those of you that don't know, are magnetized. Whichever one you're not using, you simply put to the back of the airbrush. Now, for a lot of artists, they don't even bother with a crown cap. Uh, all the crown cap does is continue to protect the needle while eliminating the... Uh, diffusing capabilities of the uh, standard nozzle. This this conical shape here, what it does is when the air jets out, it it expands through the Venturi effect here. So it, it, it's going to expand like this and paint correspondingly. You can do fine line work, but it's going to have a little more feather to it. If you really want tight line, simply remove the normal cap. Again, if you want to use the crown cap, some people are getting within just a few millimeters of their surface with the needle and you don't want to run the risk of damaging it. For the artist that really knows what they're doing, they don't bother with the fan cap, they just shoot that, and, that's, uh, that's I do it. and work with, with it that way. Uh, the airbrush doesn't know whether it's got a fan or got a crown cap on it or not. Uh, it's still going to produce phenomenally tight lines. This thing, I want to go back to, you know, for me, I literally wouldn't be doing it if, if I wasn't able to, to point and shoot. Mm -hmm. And I actually was able to take and complete successfully a, a Drew Blair textures class. Usually they're using microns and things like that. I was able to do this with a point two and this and my trusted tritium. I, I kind of blew his mind <laughs> when I did it. People have brand loyalty but uh, there's more than one good brand out there and it's just a matter of finding what works for you. You know we feel that we make a great quality product that a lot of consumers do appreciate and enjoy but uh, there's there's a lot of good airbrushes out there. Yeah. And uh, we just hope that uh, Grex is part of the conversation as far as your arsenal of airbrushes are concerned. Yes, yeah, so. it is for me. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do this recently. <laughs> Check this I out. Pulled it on a tritium. And the fan cap, trust me, I, you need you needed the fan cap for this. Yeah, yeah. I can see like with the uh, chrome areas, especially where you're working with a, a metalizer for sure. Ugh. Anyway, but thank you for having me on, Walter. Well, well, thank thank it's you for coming on down. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, Spray Gunner is a great operation here. Grex is a wonderful airbrush and changed my world. Can't thank you enough. You're welcome. Our pleasure.